Hello guys, welcome back to Biotorials. This is Mansi Joshi back again with another video on RNA and its types. So in this video, we shall learn about messenger RNA first. So here I'll teach you all what is the function of messenger RNA and how is its structure. So guys, let's get started. So guys, firstly we all know that RNA and DNA are somewhat same in structure. Okay, so we'll just point out small differences that they both have. Okay, so RNA has only single strand that is uh, only one strand is present whereas DNA has two strands. Okay, the first strand is, uh, you know, bonded with another strand uh, along with the nitrogenous bases. Okay, base pairs are present over here in between these two strands. So apart from this, we can say that RNA is present in cytoplasm whereas DNA is always present inside the nucleus. Okay, so that is the first point we see. And the strands are made up of ribose sugar inside the RNA. Okay, ribose sugar moiety is present. And in DNA, deoxyribose sugar moiety is present. The structure of this both sugar is same. It's just that here we have hydroxyl group that is O and H both are present. Whereas here we have only H group present. Only hydrogen is present and oxygen is removed. And that is why we call it as deoxyribose. And here it is ribose sugar itself. Now in nitrogenous base what we see is that for RNA we have adenine guanine as purines and cytosine and uracil as pyrimidines. For uh, DNA, the nitrogenous bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine and instead of uracil, we have thymine in DNA. So these are the major differences we can call it for RNA and DNA. There are many more differences also but uh, for this video, let's just consider these three main differences. Okay, so moving on further, we have three types of RNA. Now, imagine that we have DNA as a boss. Okay, DNA is boss and it is always present inside the nucleus. DNA also controls each and everything that happens inside the cell. Okay, and it is present only inside the nucleus. It doesn't come out of the nucleus. Now, how will this DNA control the whole cell? How will it produce proteins also uh, just by sitting inside the nucleus? Then what this DNA does, it starts producing three assistants. Okay. So, these assistants are messenger RNA that is mRNA. Later on comes transfer RNA that is tRNA. And then the third one is ribosomal RNA that is rRNA. So, these three types of RNA, they act as an assistant for DNA. Okay. So, in today's video, we'll just consider this first RNA that is messenger RNA. Okay. So, moving forward, we have messenger RNA which transfers the genetic information from the DNA in the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Okay. So, inside the nucleus is present DNA. Now suppose if I have a DNA, okay, so just imagine this is a DNA, okay. Now this DNA is having some base pairs over here, okay. I have unwinded the DNA from this whole area, okay. And this particular upper strand is having 3 dash to 5 dash direction, okay. So this is the direction of this particular upper strand. Now, this DNA has to produce RNA, okay, for the help. Now, how this RNA will be produced? Now, suppose the base pairs here, they go on like say it is A here, G, C, T and likewise it goes on. Now, we have RNA strand coming over here. Now, this RNA strand will produce the corresponding base pairs here, okay, like if A is present over here, 
then normally adenine that is a it pairs with thymine but since this strand is for rna it will pair with uracil that is u and for g it is always c for c it is g and when it is t there is a and it goes on like this okay now consider this particular rna strand is formed okay so now since it is formed it will have phi dash and here and 3 dash and here okay now suppose i have depicted this particular strand in this picture so let us consider this diagram here now for this strand we have this starting section towards the phi dash end named as start codon okay this is start codon what does codon mean codon is always group of three nitrogenous bases okay it is codon now here always in this start codon this particular uh, codon is going to be present for each and every type of rna okay it will never change it will be a u g only in the same sequence and at the same place okay this will never change and this makes the start codon of this mrna now we also have the stop codon here at this particular section near 3 dash n now this top codon can be uag or uga or uaa any one of them can be present over here so start codon helps to recognize the site of initiation okay which means that from here the protein synthesis will start and stop codon will always help the uh, helps uh, it also helps in recognizing the site where the protein synthesis has to be stopped okay so apart from this when only this mrna is present along with the start codon and the stop codon it is very much unstable okay so when it is unstable we have on terminal phi dash end triphosphate group okay and on the terminal that is uh, three dash we have hydroxyl residue okay wherever the three dash end is present we have oh group okay as a residue hydroxyl group and apart from that what happens is that capping and tailing takes place to stabilize this whole mrna strand this mrna is formed now capping and slicing uh, capping and tailing is very much essential so that this mrna strand stays stable so what is capping capping happens at the phi dash end capping happens when the triphosphate group is attached you can see here there is three phosphate uh, there are three phosphate present over here and it is attached to the phi dash end and here we see that this is the tail region that if this rna gets extended then here all the base pairs are going to be the adenines only a a a a and it goes on okay so the tail portion is known as polyadenylated and this capping portion has triphosphate group okay so that simple it is now we know in this structure we have start codon we have stop codon and in start codon we always have aug in stop codon we can have any one of them okay so we have capping at the phi dash end and tailing at the three dash end okay so this capping and tailing is done for stabilizing this whole mrna strand now since this mrna strand is stabilized it is now all ready to go outside the nucleus which means it is ready to go inside the cytoplasm now the exonucleus enzyme won't destroy or digest this whole mrna strand okay so this mrna strand now can be used inside the cytoplasm for the synthesis of protein okay so single mrna codes single protein in eukaryotes okay so in eukaryotes only single protein can be uh, coded by mrna but for the prokaryotes a single mrna can code one or more proteins okay so that is the case in prokaryotes so guys that's it for this video. 
now we shall continue about the other types other two types of rna in the next video until then like this video subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends until then this is mansi joshi signing off